In today's video, we will be discussing the different paradoxes in quantum physics. Quantum mechanics is an explanation for how things work on a microscopic level. The laws that control the macroscopic world we live in don't seem to apply for what is on the smaller scale. The classical interpretation of physics has many problems at the microscopic level that create paradoxes. According to Richard Feynman, the wave-particle duality is the central or only mystery of quantum mechanics. In other words, if a solution to this paradox was found, we would have resolved all the quantum mechanics paradoxes. In the diagram shown here, there is some source of waves being emitted from the left. The waves are headed toward a wall. The wall has two holes or slits in it. The top slit is currently covered. Behind the wall is another wall which works as a detector. The waves that travel through the slit in the first wall will be detected for intensity on the second wall. As you can see from the diagram, the intensity of the wave detected by the second wall is highest in the middle of the wave. There is no two-slit interference here as only one slit is open. Now, the diagram is changed so that both slits are open. When the waves travel through the slits, they will not just head toward the second wall as before. Now, the waves from one slit will interact with the waves from the other slit. This creates constructive and destructive interference. At places where the waves appear to line up perfectly so that the waves are in phase are points of constructive interference. These are now the places of highest intensity. At places where the waves do the exact opposite are points of destructive interference. In the two diagrams shown here, we can see what causes constructive and destructive interference. Constructive interference are places in which the peaks and troughs of the wave align perfectly. This is shown in the diagram to the left. The resulting wave has peaks that are much higher. To the right, there's a diagram of destructive interference. Here, the peaks of one wave align with the troughs of the other. This causes the resulting wave to be a straight line or a wave of no intensity at all. We now go back to the original diagram in which only one slit is open. Rather than having a wave emitter, we now have a particle emitter. This particle emitter will shoot one particle at a time. Particles that make it through the wall will be detected at the screen. After some time has elapsed, many particles have now been shot. It is clear to see that the particles have landed where one would expect them to behind the open slit. They create what we call a lump of particles. The lump of particles shown here is right behind the open slit as expected from experience. Both slits have now been opened. If we were to go off what we saw in the one slit experiment with particles, we would figure that there would be two equal lumps behind the two open slits. These lumps would add together to create one big lump behind the wall. According to classical physics, there is no reason why this would not be the case. However, after letting the particle emitter run for a long time, the lumps appear as shown in the diagram here. This should look familiar as it is the same pattern that was experienced when two slits were open for waves. When we look back, the reason we got this pattern with the waves was due to constructive and destructive interference. The waves from one slit interacted with the waves from the other slit, causing this pattern. But why would this happen with particles? In our setup, only one particle is being emitted at a time. There is nothing for it to interact with. However, this is exactly what quantum mechanics shows. The theory of quantum mechanics would argue that the particle travels as a superposition of itself. This means that the particle is existing in each state. For our example, the particle is traveling through both slits at the same time. When the particle travels through the wall, it interacts with itself entering through both slits. This interaction causes interference, which is why the intensity mimics that of a wave. On a microscopic level, everything acts as a superposition of itself. A particle will be in every possible state it can be. To look further into the abnormalities of the quantum world, we take a look at Wheeler's delayed choice Gedanken experiment. In the diagram shown here, a photon heads toward a beam splitter. When the particle hits the beam splitter, it could go one of two paths. There is a 50% chance the photon goes along path A and 50% chance it travels on path B. The observer has no way of telling which path the photon has taken unless two detectors are placed in a matter to do so. Here is a diagram showing just this. The photon heads towards the beam splitter, goes one of two ways, reflects off a mirror, and then goes to one of two detectors. If the top detector picks up a photon, we know it traveled along path A. If the bottom detector picks up a photon, we know it traveled along path B. 
The diagram has now changed to add a second beam splitter sitting right outside of the apparatus. The beam splitter has been calibrated so that it will only deflect beams towards detector 2. This is only possible with constructive interference. For now, the photons will continue to shoot down the paths as before. At the instant right before the particle is about to cross the other path, we place the beam splitter down. Assuming the particle is traveling alone, the particle will not be able to travel past the beam splitter as it needs constructive interference in order to get through and hit detector 2. However, we witness detector 2 lighting up the instant after the beam splitter is placed down. The paradox we are observing is that of delayed choice. In order for the particle to have hit detector 2, it must have traveled along both paths as a superposition of itself. However, before the second beam splitter was added, the particles were traveling singularly and only hitting one of the two detectors. To make things weirder, beam splitter 2 is only added at the last instant, meaning the particle had traveled almost the entirety of path B. With that being the case, the only way for this constructive interference to occur would be if the particle were to go back in time and travel along path A and B to create interference with itself to allow the particle through. If we let this run as we had it and then remove beam splitter 2 at the last instance as it was before, the particle will only hit one detector. This is the other side of the paradox. Since beam splitter 2 had been down, we would now, with our new knowledge, expect the particle to split into a superposition of itself and travel along both paths. An instant before the interaction with beam splitter 2, it was removed. With nothing to interact with, we would assume the superposition might hit both detectors. Yet, what we find is it only travels to one, meaning that the same paradox of going back in time to combine states after beam splitter 1 occurs. We do not know how this is possible, Yet, this is precisely what John Wheeler observed in his Gedanken Delayed Choice Experiment.